Good afternoon. Welcome to Make It Monday. <laughs> if you're new here, I'm Leslie. I um, go by the moniker the Plaid Poodle, and I teach people how to make um, pretty things using stamps, paper, and ink. And I'm giving myself a gold star today because I started on time and I had no technical difficulties. If you're here, please say hello. I'm live on Facebook and YouTube, so um, we'd love to chat. Um, love to have something, somebody to talk to. Hi, Kathy. Love to have somebody to talk to while I'm um, crafting. I'm going to share a cute little project today um, that's very easy, um, but it does require some die cutting. I have a, I probably could do a an alternate that you wouldn't need the um the dies if you are not a die cutter but um we'll get to that here in a second um i don't think i ha i do have some news i'm going to turn the camera around put my oh i do that every time you'd think i would learn I got to put myself in the corner. Um, I know, Kathy, I'm so excited to see you. Girls, I'm having a live class on Thursday. If you are in the Kansas City area, um, today is the last day to register. The cost is only $15, and you get a $5 off coupon if you place the Stampin' Up! order um, during the party. Um, and I know you're going to want to because um, we're going to be making some fabulous cards. This is one of them. Life is sweeter with you. It's a little um, ice cream cone. Very, very dimensional. Um, and then we're going to make this card. Thanks a bunch. We're going to use the products. I should have had a list of the products. This is from the Share a Milkshake um, bundle. This is from the Sweet Citrus bundle. And then we're going to make this card. And I forget what the name of this set is. Sweetest Cherries. And it is a punch bundle. So it's it's uh, really fun and easy. Uh, the rest has some die cutting. But I do a lot of the work for you. And my dog always decides to make her nat, her little nest every time I come on here live. She likes to crawl under my desk and start scratching. So I apologize for that noise. Anyways, I have room in both the afternoon and the evening classes. So if you are interested, please uh, reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, but otherwise, all the information is on the plaidpoodle.com. Go to classes and card making classes and you can register and you will get a uh, kind of a thank you for your order and then I will give you my address and everything you need to know but I provide everything you need for the class you just need to come uh, relax and then just enjoy a couple of hours of creating so um, would love to have you um, I did not design these cards I like to say that a lot of times I do my month has been crazy you know I was gone for a week for vacation and it just puts me behind a week. And then we've got a new catalog coming out. We had the last chance promotion. <laughs> so I have been like, Whoa! so my April class is, is just a little toned down. And I cased every one of these cards. I, I made some little adjustments, but um, I didn't want you to think that I designed these myself. If you um, might see something similar out there on the interwebs. Um, in fact, this one is right out of the catalog. <laughs> it's a catalog sample. Speaking of catalogs, I received my annual catalog. I signed, if you have been a customer of mine and have placed an order with me in the last, oh, six to nine months of $50 or more, you should have received, should have received or are going to receive um, a copy of the new annual catalog. Um, mine came, I always send myself one so that I know about when everyone else is going to be receiving theirs. So 
you should be receiving yours really shortly. Um, and if you don't, in the next week or two, reach out to me and we can get, get a new one sent out to you. Um, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and would like a catalog, just uh, message me, email me, or um, somehow contact me. Go to um, leslie.stampinup.net and there's a place to contact me and I can get your mailing information and we can get one out to you. Um, lots of fun new things in there, which I am still waiting on mine. Hi, Stephanie. Okay, and I apologize. I guess I'm not going to apologize because you can make this with whatever products you have in your uh, craft stash, stash because um, I made these with retired products. <laughs> and Kathy Garnett, this is a um, sneak peek. This is going to be your little table favor, but you don't know what's going to be tucked inside yet. So um, that'll be a surprise. But I wanted to share how I made these cute little tote bags. And um, everything I use pretty much is retired product. The punch is still um, active and the dies for the handles are still active. So, um, but you guys can use whatever designer series paper you, you have on hand and whatever cardstock. Cardstock's still active. And the, even the little gems I used, I just thought they were too perfect for the, the um, inside of those daisies. And I wanted to use those. So they are retired as well. But I'm sure you can find something um, that you can um, use to create this um, yourselves. Uh, the medium daisy punch is available, and I think that's what highlighted it all. These little flowers on the paper were my inspiration for that. So, um, Stephanie says, oh, I think I will make these for my sister's sorority class on Saturday. <laughs> Gotta get busy. Oh my gosh, you, you're getting on a plane tomorrow? Yeah, you better get busy. There's no way I could create something <laughs> if I was getting on a plane tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to pull out my um, Simply Scored tool, and um, your paper is going to measure, and I will have like a project sheet. This is this is a project I did a couple years ago. I'm repeating it, and I cha I made a little, little few changes, um, but I'll have a project sheet that you can download a PDF of this, of this little cute little bag over on my blog. Um, later on this afternoon. So just go to thepladpoodle.com and all the instructions will be over there. Alrighty, so you're going to have a piece of 8 by 4 um, designer series paper. So you can get three of these bags out of one 12 by 12 inch piece of designer series paper. Okay, Stephanie's going to learn and then make them Wednesday or Thursday. That make, well, I thought you were super woman, Stephanie. <laughs> um, I thought you could just do it all. All right, so you're going to, on the eight inch side of your designer series paper, you're going to score it at one half. You can use your paper trimmer to do the scoring as well. Three inches, four and a fourth six and three quarters and then turn it and if your paper has a direction which mine doesn't really um you're going to pay attention to that because you're going to want your direct if this is the top you're going to want your bottom to be here if you understand what i'm saying if your direction um if the direction on your paper makes a difference pay attention to where you put this one inch score line so i'm going to do the one inch score line that's going to be the bottom of the bag. Okay, I hope that made sense. Then you just have to do a little trimming. And I like to um, go ahead and fold all my score lines so I can see them better. I did go to the optometrist last week, and he said my prescription was still pretty good, so I didn't even have to get new glasses, but 
I think my eyesight is failing. I don't know. He said not. No, it wasn't. <laughs> okay. Now you've got this half inch tab here. And then you've got this these little tabs on the bottom. So I am going to cut off this little half inch by one inch tab completely. That's trash. And then we're going to trim up on these vertical score lines just to meet that horizontal score line. And I'll, I'll go ahead and put a diagram over on my blog too. It won't take me very long to do that. Um, that will kind of show you the cutting and scoring. I'll do a cutting and scoring guide over there. And these little uh, smaller tabs, I'm going to just kind of trim them out a little bit. So that's what it's going to look like. You see my stamping? I didn't get a clean grid, uh, grid sheet out. I didn't think you guys would mind. Okay. Stephanie is shaking her head. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, and I also like to do this on my little half inch side tab just cut a little bit out like that so that's what it's going to look like and then we'll put the bag together it's going to go together like this but before we do that we want to add our handles so i have already cut the circles that we're going to need you need two circles and I use the stylish shapes. These are not retired. Thank goodness. I wouldn't know what to do if I didn't have any circles to deal with. Okay, so I'm using the second to the largest circle and then the third. So I'm not using the largest. I'm using the second and third. I cut these out with the second. And then we're going to use this third one to create our handle. Here, I'll use the purple one so it makes more sense. This is Fresh Freesia. It is not retired either. <laughs> and what I did is you've got these score lines right here. This is going to be like the, the um, this will be the back of the bag. And then I'm going to fit this circle on here just until you see how my circle's lining up with the edges here. I don't want it down here. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to slide this circle down just until this edge meets the edge of the circle. And that's how I determine my placement for the handles. And you just need a little glue. See how the circle met this edge. That's how I knew where to place it. It's probably not a big deal where you place it as long as both sides are placed equal. Hey, Loopy, no worries. We're just getting started. You can watch the replay or I um, will have everything over on the plaidpoodle.com later this afternoon. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing with the second circle that I cut out. And you can kind of eyeball it too. I don't think they have to be absolutely perfect, but you, you know, it's like a purse. All right, now is when we're going to take this second circle, stitch circle shape, and just kind of put it in the middle there. Aren't they cute? You get one on Thursday, Loopy. I'm so excited to see you girls. It's been forever. These are your little table favors, but you'll be surprised by what's inside. <laughs> The surprise is going to be kind of ruined, but you get one of these when you come. 
All right, so we're gonna cut out two of the, this one and this one. Let me grab my Well, there it went. So we'll have to run this through twice, but no worries. Just center it right there in the middle. Just eyeball it. day it's beautiful here in Kansas City to see how that made the little handle then we're just gonna do it over here on the other side I was thinking I could use my mini uh, die cutting machine but I don't think so I think this is four inches and then with the circle I don't think it would have worked so alrighty and that's all the die cutting we're gonna do I just think it's a little extra extra it kind of makes it look like a handbag or a tote bag with that little circle indent you could probably just make this without um if you don't have a die cutting machine or circle die cuts you could just make use the same measurements and everything and then it would be a little box and then you could you could also just um i should have made one as an option you could just um like hole punch and add some ribbon for a handle. So if you don't have the die cutting machine, just improvise. And I want it to go this way, don't I, people? Oh, yeah, oh, look what I did. Well, this one's gonna be purple instead of this, so it's not gonna have, <laughs> what is wrong with me? I get to jabbering and then I forget what I'm doing. That's what's wrong, but it'll still be pretty. It's just gonna be all purple. Maybe I'll add a mango melody uh, daisy to it. Or maybe a white daisy. Just to give it a little something different. All right, so I put the glue on that little half inch tab and that's what's going to hold our bag together. And then I'll put a little glue on these tabs. And then I always like, I always say this, here's the seam from the fold where we glued it together. So I want this to be the back. So I'm going to fold it in first. This is always the hardest part is getting it squared up. And then this will be our front flap. We'll just fold it down. Hold it there a second. And then you can use your bone folder. Now, as you can see here, it's a little loose there because I didn't put the glue far enough up but we can add we can fix that real quick I didn't want to over glue it there we go oh it's so cute I love these all right so that's basically the bag now you can embellish it any way you want. I just, I kind of went with the flower print off the, the paper and I grabbed the medium daisy punch and 
I also cut a little piece of cardstock. This measures a little less than two and a half and, it, and one and a fourth, just to give the bottom. This is completely optional, but it fits right in the bottom, so it gives the bottom a little, um, makes it a little bit more substantial. Make sure my back is my back. I did this so good, I can't even see the seam. <laughs> I'm having a great day. Okay, now, this is what I was going to use for my flower, but I just think that's too much, too much. I want to use something a little different. I want to use this print if I have any left of that print. Oh, turn it over and there it is. And I'm going to punch two of the daisies. And then I like to curl them a little bit with the um, bone folder, just to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. And then to adhere it together, I'm just going to use a little glue dot. and kind of put these petals cattywampus from each other. There we go. That's your little flower. I don't think I used a mini dimensional. I did use a mini dimensional. That's why this one doesn't look as um, Very gently pull them apart. <laughs> did, that sound, did that sound like Julia Child? I felt like it did in that movie. Here we go. Let's use a mini Stampin' Dimensional. And then they have a little bit more dimension. There we go. Yeah, that looks better. I knew when I did it, it looks a little weird. Okay, we're going to put that on there. But first, I'm going to put this thanks so much tag on there. And this is completely, completely um, retired. This is called the Jewelry tag punch. <laughs> this is very, very old. And then I'm using this tiny tags um, stamp set. But if you have any, you could even handwrite something and just cut a little rectangle. But since I had the punch, I decided to grab it and use it. But you could even just write things on there or stamp something and um, just cut a rectangle tag. I just wanted something tiny for this tiny little bag. I'm using stays on, which I hardly ever use stays on. But since the font on this was so tiny, sometimes stays on um, prints a little um, crisper than Memento. Okay, and I just cut that tag out of uh, one of the circles that we cut out. Just a little scrap. And then I'm using another retired product. Today's the day of retired products. Projects. Product. Project. To add my little um, hole. And then I just took some white twine Baker's twine and I'm just going to tie a knot in the top of that I kind of wanted it to look like it, it was tied onto the bag. 
and I kind of wanted it to just kind of dangle down there. Okay. And for this one, I'm just going to use another little glue dot. And I just put it in the corner there, and then I'm just going to tie down this, um, or glue down the, the little tag and then I think I just glued these yeah I did not add a dimensional to that so I'm just going to use a couple more mini glue dots Put that on there. I love how that turned out. I was kind of disappointed that I didn't use that paper, but I'm kind of loving the purple one. All right, and then to um, embellish my little daisy, we could put a rhinestone or a button or whatever you have. I had these retired clear faceted gems. This one's a gold one that I used on the Mango Melody bags. These are clear. I just thought they looked better with the cooler colors of the um, Fresh Freesia. There you go, guys. Aren't they sweet? And then you could put a little filler in there. Um, I think a gift card would fit in there. Um, I need to add a little bit more glue over there. I'm going to put a surprise for my Thursday class members in these. I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to use for, but maybe I'll take a picture after I do that and share it next next week. Um, and that's it. You could put some candies in there. Like I said, I think a little gift card you could slip in there with some filler. Um pair of earrings, jewelry, anything small. <laughs> anyway, that is the project for Make It Monday. Thanks for joining me uh, once again. If you're in the Kansas City area, today's the last day to sign up for my Thursday class. Um, I have an afternoon session at 1 and an evening at 6.30. We always have a great time. Um, I do all the work for you. You just get to come and have a have a crafty time. So, um, and I look forward to seeing Kathy and Loopy there. Yay. My North ladies. I get to see them after so long. Um, the rest of you have a safe trip, Stephanie, be careful traveling. Um, and we will talk to you Wednesday for coffee and a card. Um, in the meantime, happy stamping. <laughs>